Hi there, I'm Jody Seibert, your bookkeeping coach, and today I'm going to show you a few ways to make it faster and more efficient to record your bank transactions. I'm going to show you in Xero and QuickBooks Online, and even if you're not using both, just take a look to see if the software might be right for you and how you could gain some efficiencies. I'm in the Xero demo company, and I'm just going to click on the bank feed. Um, the fun part about um, demo companies is you never quite know what you're going to find. So in this one you can see there's it's starting already automatically match some transactions. They wrote a note for this one, but what if we wanted to add a role for City of Limousines, which is one way you can automate this because if you need no other reminder that we are creatures of habit, um, just look at your bank and credit card feeds and you will see, which is why we can create these rules because we are creatures of habit. So when you're creating a rule, and whether it's QuickBooks Online or Zero, you really don't want to use equals. You starts with or contains, um, narrow it down. Um, a lot of bank feed items come through and have like city of limousines and then a space and a bunch of numbers or something. And you want to make sure you take that out and make this the lowest common denominator. And typically I don't include that. I always put in, um, a vendor name and we have that. Choose what account you want it to go to. You can do an allocation. QuickBooks Online lets you do this too. If say you always want to split this between um, two different accounts for whatever reason, you can use this um, to do that and you can allocate based on a percentage or a flat dollar amount or something like that. Um, the reference, eh, you can pull it in from the description on the bank feed item. The other thing I do on bank feeds, I let it let these rules run on all bank accounts because many of us change bank and credit card companies and when that happens, you don't have to either recreate or edit all your rules. Um, and yes, that's a lesson I learned the hard way. So it's so much easier. Um, let me come in here and see it now wants to apply the rule. So that that's how you knew it worked. Um, if you have a typo or something, then it, it would still want you to want to create the transaction. The other way you can speed this up, because you see there's a whole bunch of things in here, you know, matching and deposits and, you know, here are some other rules. But there's another way you can get in here to this cash coding. And this is a feature that QuickBooks Online really doesn't have. And what this does is list on one line, um, all your transactions instead of making it into those rather space hogging um, transactions you saw on the reconcile screen. When you fall behind with your coding of these transactions, this, you can, I've seen people with hundreds, if not over a thousand transactions to record, and this can be a more efficient way to get caught up. And as always, you, you pick the method that makes the most sense to you and fits the way you work. So I like to click on the payee, um, and again, if you need any reminder, we are creatures of habit. So you can see it's already coding this, and then you can say save and reconcile. The other thing you can do is this Cooper Street Bakery. Um, let me see if they have a meals. I think they use entertainment. So when I tab off of this, you notice it fills this in. And it would do the same thing if I had to type in the payee. So this is how you can very quickly and efficiently get your bank feed caught up. And this is for banks and credit cards in zero. And it can help you get caught up. And again, you can, you know, you can sort by description, reference, you know, spent or received, whichever um, way makes sense. You just narrow it down and only show what um, zero has suggestions for and that way you can get this caught up a lot more efficiently than on this reconcile screen where you're you're limited to going transaction by transaction which isn't bad if you only have say 10 or 20 transactions but when you're hundreds behind this can get 
sort of tedious. So let's jump over to QuickBooks Online and see how it would work over here. Let's jump into banking. And let's pick on the checking account because it has some transactions. So you can see in here it's trying to match quite a few transactions. And when it tries to match, that means you've already entered an invoice, a deposit, or an expense, or entered an invoice and then wrote a check for it. And now it's the bank feed is saying, oh, I recognize this transaction. Well, a, a pretty quick and efficient way to handle this would be to check these items off. And as you do that, you kind of want to eyeball these. Make sure the dates make sense. Um, if you have common dollar amounts, say like $500 or like this $50 one, it, it could find more than one transaction. So you just want to make sure that it's truly matching the right one. And then what you would do is, let's pick on this one too, and under the batch actions, you can say accept selected. And just like that, voila. You can also sort by description or payee. It, how this comes in sort of depends on, you know, it all depends on how it comes in from your bank. You know, one of these fields might make more sense to sort by than the other. You can go create a rule for a rental. Um, and it looks like they, we might have gotten a refund from them of this $200, but it looks like we typically rent from them. Um, so let's go create a rule. And sort of the one thing I don't like about QuickBooks Online Bank Rules, you don't just click a transaction and say, oh, I want to create a rule based on this transaction. QuickBooks makes you come up here next to the banking and click on Bank Rules and click a new rule. And it makes you start from scratch every time. So you have to, I always use the, the name, um, the vendor name. Money out, I always run the, again, for all bank accounts because, again, if you change bank accounts, this could get painful. You have to come and edit them or recreate things. Um, the blank bank text contains or starts with, um, I wouldn't use exactly. So in QuickBooks, contains is the only thing um, that you can choose from. You can put multiple criteria by saying, you know, if the amount is over a certain amount, if there's, say, there's a company that you, they have expenses of varying amounts, but say they always bill you, say, a monthly maintenance fee of X dollars that you want to a certain account, you can add some more criteria. Um, let me see if we can find, oh, really? They're not in here? Okay. So, equipment rental sounds good for a rental. Um, this is something that really didn't add that. There we go. Okay. Sometimes school books online likes to pretend it's doing that. And here again, you could split. You know, this is where you do your splits again. I don't ever let QuickBooks Online automatically do anything like that, at least until I've been able to test out the rule and make sure it's working as I intended to and there's not additional criteria that would make me regret the automation. So if we save that and we go over here to the banking, um, you now see here's a rule and here's a rule. It didn't... Um, apply the rule to this because you either choose an expense spent or received and this is probably a refund so the rule didn't apply but for these two you can select this and say accept selected so that's how in QuickBooks Online you can kind of get through this pretty quickly you can um, try sorting this and bring all your match transactions to the top to kind of, I like to do that first. It's sort of a way to clear the deck. Um, and that way you see the transactions. Like, here's the other thing. QuickBooks Online likes to make some very bad assumptions, starting with uncategorized income and expense. Don't, please don't use those accounts. An auditor or your tax pro is 
going to give you the evil eye and make you research and, and explain these anyway. So don't use the, don't use these. These things are something. Figure it out. If you are struggling with these categories, where to put things, chances are your chart of accounts um, isn't optimized for you and your company and your current situation. If you're if you're guessing or just simply don't know what to do with transactions, chances are your your chart of accounts or categories just need some work. And then you know, that investment of time and money to, to optimize your chart of accounts will pay off in getting through this bank feed a lot faster or just getting through it, period, because you you take away the frustration of doing it. So I hope that helped. And now you can go off and get bang through your bank feed and get all your bookkeeping up to date. If you're still stuck, feeling like you need some help, please do get in touch at fixyouraccounting.com. I am Jody Cyber, your bookkeeping coach. Have an awesome day.